going on everybody? Welcome to my channel. In today's video I'm going to focus on the timeline panel inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. So let's get started. Let's head down to the timeline panel and I'm going to click on it and you're going to notice that it's going to put this blue highlight around the edge and that's just letting you know that that panel is now active. So let's start with this first little section here where it says test one. This is just what I named the sequence. You can change it. Let's head over here and if you just change it to uh, test 10 just for reference click off that'll change the name and also you'll notice up here it'll change the name so if you have multiple sequences open they'll just display here here and here and you can toggle in between but we're only working with this one sequence let's just head down to this number section and you'll notice that it changes along with the playhead this is just indicating the location of the playhead so the further you move it you'll notice the numbers change these are the frames per second these are the seconds these are the minutes and these are the hours so as you scrub down the timeline, you'll notice it changes. So for example, right here, we're at 25 seconds and 28 frames into the, into the timeline. Now let's head down to this little magnet snap in timeline button. So this is, when this is blue, it means it's active. And this is really helpful. So when you want to move clips around, you notice there's a gap here. So let's just grab this clip and let's move it closer. And you'll notice it kind of snaps into place. So you get close and then snaps. This is really helpful because when you have a bunch of video clips down here and you're kind of throwing them together and putting them in order you want, you can just do that and be a little more carefree because you know that it's snapping right to the edge. Now if we unclick that and we pull the clip away, as we move closer it doesn't snap. And like I said, you can also accidentally override the clip. You'll notice how it crosses over right there. That's where the snapping feature is nice because it won't allow you to cross over unless you unless you grossly cover it. But if you're just right on the edge, it'll snap into place. So I'm going to turn that back on and then just snap it into place. This next button is the linked selection. So you'll notice that this first video track I have is attached to an audio track. So if I click on it, you'll notice the audio track below is highlighted in addition. Now if we unclick that, you'll see it just highlights only the video or highlights only the audio. Now, if you highlight just the video and you click delete, the audio will stay put because it's not up here, it's not clicked. I'm going to undo that. And then the same thing, if you click the audio and you manipulate it or delete it, it will not affect the video. Undo that. So if, I'm sh if I shorten the audio, it doesn't change the video. Go back. Now we're going to reconnect it. So now they're connected. If I click on, you'll see both are highlighted. Now if I grab and adjust the audio, the video goes down with it. Same thing on top, it goes with it. And then if I go to highlight it and I go to delete, it deletes both of them when that's linked. So this unlinks and links the items together. Now the next button will be the marker button. If you click on the marker, you can see it adds a marker wherever the playhead is. So let's move the playhead a little further. We can go back and click it, move the playhead a little bit further, add another marker or you can use the keyboard shortcut M. So as we're going down, I'm gonna click M, 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 M. And you'll notice it left markers at all these different locations. The markers are good, like I said, for reference. If you wanna kind of flag a specific frame or a clip, you can put markers down. So if you get a long, long project, you know exactly where to go back to. But I'm gonna delete them. So I'm gonna hover over the marker, right mouse click, head down to clear all markers, a done, and that's it. So the next button will be this little wrench icon. Now if you click it, it'll give you different, different options. These are all visuals. So I'm not going to click on those because the kind of default visuals, what they show you is nice. But you can explore that tab if you want to change it. So now we've went over that, I want to head down to the tracks. You'll notice all these different lines that have different items, clips of video and audio clips. These are all called tracks. So we have the video track 1, which is here, video track 2, video track 3. And then below the video tracks are all the audio tracks. You'll notice audio track 1, audio track 2, audio track 3. And they're all separated by a line in the middle. So if you notice, there's this kind of this equator line, which separates the video tracks and all the audio tracks. Now you can manually grab them and adjust them however you like, as far as if you like a different proportion on the timeline. And the same goes for the individual tracks. You can drag it, make bigger or smaller manually how you like. 
Now there are a couple keyboard shortcuts, which I use a lot, so it's good if you kind of learn them because down the road, it'll save you time. The very first one would be if you hold down shift key and do plus or minus, so minus shrinks everything down, plus opens everything up. So shift minus shrinks and shift plus opens them up. Now mind you, they only open up to this one specific size, but it's good as a, just a quick jump to if you need to kind of minimize everything and look over your timeline or and or open them up to see more detail. Now if you want to just blow up the video tracks only, if you do command plus, you can blow the video tracks up as much as you like, multiple, multiple times. And let's shrink those down. And if you go to option, you do option plus, that'll blow up all the audio tracks. And then option minus will shrink the audio track. So once again, on Apple, command plus will blow up all the video tracks. Command minus will sh make them smaller. And then if you go to option, which is next to the command button on the Mac, do option plus, you can do that to the audio tracks if you want to see them clearer, or you can shrink them down. And then if you go back to that very first shortcut, say we blow up this and we want to go back to kind of a standard, just hit the, hit the shift minus, shift plus, it'll reset them to the, all the same size. Now if you're working on a PC, just remember instead of command on the Mac, it's control on the PC, and instead of option on the Mac, it's alt. So all those pluses and minus just switch out control and alt for the PC versions. So if you ever get to a point where you have so many items and you're down the timeline and you're kind of lost where you are and you want to see the kind of backup and see the overview of the entire timeline, everything you have in, like I said, when you have 30, 40 minutes, this is very helpful if you're zoomed in on one specific section. If you hit the backslash button above the enter key or return key on a Mac keyboard, the backslash button, and that'll show you everything in the timeline. So however long it is, like I said, if you kind of zoom in and you get lost in the close zoomed in section, backslash, and it'll show you the overall everything. So you'll notice there's a few empty tracks here on the video side and then below on the audio section, there's an empty audio track. So I'm gonna head over here to my project panel and I have a sound effects here, which is Rolling Thunder. I'm gonna drag it and drop it and bring it over here in the third track, which is the empty track. And you notice I can place it anywhere I like. So I'm gonna let it go right there. Now the reason why I put on the empty track is if I end up going to put it on a track above, you'll notice that it'll cover up the music I have right there, which is the song. And if I let go, It'll completely cover that up, which I don't want to do. So I'm going to undo that and leave it here on the empty track. So now when you cross over, we have the music. We'll have the sound effects playing in addition to the audio, the, the music track. So let's go over here and let's say we want to add a track up on the video track. Uh, say I want to add, I want to add some text here. So I'm going to go over the text tool and grab that. And I'm going to click a text here and I'm going to write summer. Click. So now you'll notice that the text icon appeared on the second video track. So now it says summer when we go over that section. Now we, if we head over the details of each track, there's a few different options. You'll notice here is a lock track. So if you click this, everything on this track is locked. No matter what editing you do, it will not affect it. So it'll protect it. So say you want to delete some things and we go to click delete. You'll notice even though I did the lasso around that section, it did not delete it because it's been locked. So I'm going to undo that. And then on the opposite, I'm going to lock this track below, which now locks all that. So if I highlight the same section and click delete, it'll delete the things left unlocked. So I'm going to undo that. So that's the lock button. Now we'll head over to this toggle sync. This is something I'll do in a further uh, a video later. Let's jump to the toggle track output. Now if you click this, you'll notice how it looks like an eye and there's a line through it. That means you now can't see it everything on this track only. So you'll notice as we go over, normally where that would have said summer, it does not say summer because now you're, you've locked off the visual. Now let's undo that and let's lock off this visual. So it's saying there's no sight on this track here. So now as we move over, we don't see the beach anymore, but once we get to that summer part, you see the summer title. We're gonna undo that. Now the same principles apply to the audio. You know, you can lock the audio so they can't be touched or edited. And then also if you come over this M, it's kind of like the visual, the eye thing, the anti-eye, the anti-scene, because it's an M, which stands for mute. 
So now when you click that, you're not going to be able to hear that track at all. Let's come down here to the more specific one, the, the song. So now I've clicked the song, you won't be able to hear it. But because this track is still not muted, when you get to the sound effect, you're going to hear the sound effect. See, there's the sound effect. Now if I mute the sound effect and unmute the music track, go over the exact same section and I play it, you're going to hear the music but not the sound effect. See how that muted? But if I unmute it and play them together, you'll hear the sound effect in addition. Now another thing you can do, you can also click the S, which is the solo track. So if you have the music, you have audio, you have sound effects, you have all these different, you have voiceover. If you just click the S for solo track, that means this is the only audio you're going to play no matter how many other tracks. So you don't have to mute the other tracks and leave one open. You can just click solo to make it quicker. Now if I undo that and I click solo on the sound effects, it just plays the sound effects. So it's kind of a shortcut if you have four or five different audio tracks and you click solo track to isolate that one, it's easier than, than muting all the other four to leave the one open. And then there's also this mic, which is the voiceover. So if you want to record a track, so say you're doing sound, your own personal sound effects, you can mute everything, push record, and then record your voiceover or whatever you want to record. And one last thing I want to I want to show you is down here on the bottom, you'll see those little handlebars. You can manipulate them as big or small as you want. And the same thing on the side here, remember the equator that splits it down the middle? The audio has its own little version if you want to stretch it out that way. And then the video has the same thing if you want to stretch it out that way. We'll definitely try to learn the keyboard shortcuts as you go because it really is going to help your efficiency and your speed during the process of the edit. And it takes a while, but the more you do it, the more you learn and the more you memorize. And then it'll be second nature on the keyboard shortcuts. So for example, right now, I'm going to do backspace, which is above the enter or return key, and it shows my entire timeline. So hopefully this tutorial helped you kind of get an understanding of the timeline and a few of the features inside, at least to get started with your editing journey. And if you learned anything from watching this video, you can subscribe to my channel because I'm going to be posting more videos about editing in Adobe Premiere Pro. And hopefully I can help you along your journey of learning the program and getting closer to editing all your movies and videos. And please give the video a thumbs up so the YouTube algorithm can help me move along and grow my channel. Anyway, thanks again everybody for watching the video and we will see you next time. Later!